Hello everyone. Hope you all are having a good day. I had a great day. I went to church and it was a great service. My sister preached the message. She did an awesome job. Anyway, on my way home, I started to um, get a thought and I wanted to put it in a video because I'm a great procrastinator and I didn't even get out of my church clothes. I just was like, let me just make this now while it's fresh on my mind. And that was, have you noticed that everyone is sick? Everyone has an ailment, a condition, a thing, a problem, some disease. If you know anyone who's perfectly healthy, applaud them. But it just seems like everyone is sick. Even the kids are sick. And if you don't have a condition or whatever, it's, it's people's bowels. Have you ever seen so many commercials just about gas and bloating and constipation, diarrhea, all this kind of stuff? I've probably had more bowel conversations than the law allows. And I realize I'm a pediatrician. I'm supposed to talk about kids bowels. That's part of my job. But the parents are volunteering their information. I'm in the Walmart. Someone looks over in my crate in my cart and they're like, can you eat that? I can't eat that. It messes up my bowels. And I'm just like, <laughs> I, I'm a bowel magnet. Anyway, I was thinking the reason why we are having so many problems, it's our food. It has to be our food. Our food is our fuel, and if we're not putting good fuel in our machines, they will not run well. And one of the biggest problems that I have is with genetically modified foods. I think genetically modified foods um, is an experiment that went terribly wrong. And the problem is the scientists don't see this. No one is seeing this. No one has prescience enough to see that it's the problem. First of all, don't tell me that the genetically modified food is the same thing as the original food. It cannot be. Implicit within the name is modified. It means it's changed. That's what modified means. So don't tell me that the thing you changed is just exactly like the thing that you started with. That can't be. It's making us sick. Why do you think the bees are dying? We're, having, we're in the midst of a bee crisis. It's because the bees are pollinating these things and it's either the gene splicing, the way we messed with the DNA or the, the, the pesticides that we're spraying on the foods, but something is killing the bees. Those are the canaries in our minds. We're supposed to take a clue from that. The food is wrong. It's Franken food. Why do you think so many people have allergies? Come on, folks. Even grown folks, things that you used to be able to eat, you cannot eat anymore because all of a sudden you develop an allergy, that's because your body's rejecting it. Kids, every child I know is allergic to peanuts. Since when are kids so allergic to peanuts? When we were growing up, anybody over the age of 35 probably has the same experience. When you were growing up, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich was the staple of the child's lunch box. Everybody had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now you have whole schools where if you walk in with a peanut butter sandwich, you could get arrested because the whole entire student body is going to go up and have an anaphylactic reaction. I have never written so many EpiPens in my entire life. I've been practicing now for almost 20 years. The first 10 years of my practicing, I rarely wrote an EpiPen. I mean, once every four to six months, I would write an EpiPen for the one poor allergic kid that there was. Now, every day, I have to write an EpiPen, a prescription for an EpiPen. It's ridiculous. Come on, folks. Our bodies are rejecting the food. I don't know why the scientists aren't seeing this. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because there's money to be made in it. And I understand the argument about, oh, but it's done some good. You know, there are people over in other parts of the world that are suffering from famine in the land and starvation, and these genetically modified foods have been able to you know, sustain the crops and sustain the people. Yes, but you do understand that you can have a little bit of good, but the thing still be a net negative. That's why it's a net negative. The good, does it outweigh the bad or does the bad outweigh the good? It's sort of like Flint, Michigan. The water that they were giving the kids was hydrating them and bathing them, but it was also contaminated with lead and was poisoning them. So the bad outweighed the good. I don't know, who do we write? Who do we call? The congressman? The senator? Who do we get to listen to the fact that I think our food is killing us? Just like they're killing the bees? The only reason we're not dying like that is because our bodies are a little more sophisticated and we have modern medicine to, to, to get us out the rut. 
I mean, if I see one more commercial, bloating, gas, constipation, why are our bellies so bad? Because we've completely ruined the flora and the fauna of our bellies. There's supposed to be some homeostasis, good bacteria, a little bit of bad bacteria. We've wiped out all the good bacteria. That's why we have to take probiotics. Why do you think probiotics are making such a surge? Because we need them to repopulate all the bacteria that are dying off from the crazy food and the crazy pesticide. <laughs> what to do? I don't know. Try to eat organic as much as you can. Try to grow your own crops if you can. Even when you do that, you're going to be buying mostly genetically modified seed unless you can, you know, somehow miraculously find some seed that's the real food. I don't know, y'all. We're just going to have to pray. Just pray and ask for God's protection and guidance and grace and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please. Anyway, just my thoughts. Peace and love.